Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah. As, uh, as the world is sort of coming to terms with the tragedy of this pandemic that's inflicting so much damage and harm, um, irrespective of nation, and country, nationality, religion, many of us have to come to terms with the consequences of that and what that means for us at home. And so one of the parts of our families are our lives that are struggle that we struggle the most with is our relationships with those people that we're spending most of our time with. And that includes our spouses, our children, and our extended family members. So how do we learn to cope with that? And how do we learn to manage some of the challenges that we face with being at home? And many employers and many companies have now made it mandatory for their employees to spend more time at home or to spend a majority of their time working from home. And I wanted to take a few minutes to just kind of address some of those concerns and how we can make the best of our time to allocate and to make ourselves as responsive and receptive to the needs and demands of being at home and being uh, around family more often. Uh, in, a, in an authentic hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam mentions عن Anas ibn Malik قال رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صره أن يبسط له في رزقه أو ينسأ له في أثره فليصل رحمه متفق عليه that whoever is pleased to have his provisions extended and his lifespan extended then let him keep good relations with his family so for us we understand through the nas of the hadith that this is something which is praiseworthy and I'm sure many of us it doesn't kind of cross our minds twice that we have to have good relationships with our family members our extended relatives etc however being confined to a uh, small space or a tighter space with them all the time or a majority of the time can definitely bring about a lot of stressors and red flags so here are some action items here are some six action items that we can begin to apply into our lives and put into practice and try to do what we can uh, to make this difficult times a little bit easier for all of us. So number one, begin on the same page. One of the most important things that we can do, uh, especially being at home, whether you're, um, you're working or you're a stay-at-home mother or you're extended family members or children, whoever it is, is being on the same page with the members of, of your home and household. Um, that means sitting down and having a formal conversation, sort of like a, an informal contract, an agreement. And what that means is to discuss the challenges that you're going to face. That yes, we're definitely going to be bumping into one another a lot more often. And that can in, a, in and of itself create more challenges for us. Uh, additionally, discussing the strengths and weaknesses of living together. The strengths of which, of course, can be family unity, spending time with one another, being there with each other, spending more time, quality time, hopefully, with more mem with members of your family. The weaknesses, however, can also be that now because of all the time that you're spending with one another, this will probably instigate some fighting, some challenges with being and seeing each other a lot more often than maybe perhaps you're used to, and the general wear and tear of being around the same person for so long. This isn't to say that you're not happy with them or you don't love them, but this is just saying that naturally everybody needs a break to which we will get to as well. But it's important that you have this conversation ahead of time so that everyone is on the same page, that there will be challenges that we will face. There will be some benefits to those challenges. And then there will also be some things that we might consider as negatives and having an open dialogue about, about that ahead of time will save you a lot of headache later on. And being able to have that conversation entails that you're truthful to one another. So the second action item is engaging in truthfulness. Now, this isn't your standard truthfulness that you don't want to lie, but it's being honest about how you're feeling and what you're going through. So if you're the parents, then having an uh, empathic heart and listening and being available emotionally to your children and to the other members of your household, because those children are also going to be feeling the exhaustion and fatigue of staying at home all day long. They're perhaps used to being out, seeing their friends, going out to eat at a restaurant, and now they're confined to their homes. So as parents, it is your sort of extended responsibility at this point to be open and listen to the pain and sort of some of the sad uh, uh, experiences or emotions that your children are going through, why they feel the way that they feel, 
It's understandable that you feel the same way that they do. However, because you're the parent, lending an empathic ear to your children, feeling their plight, feeling their pain can go a long way. Um, inshallah, the hope is and the plan is, um, as many of us know in California, the order is extended for close to three weeks um, for this this somewhat of a lockdown that we have in California. And so that's going to be a long time to, to remain indoors. And we'll go over that as well. It's not entirely indoors, but um, nonetheless, being truthful and open and lending an open ear to your children and the other members of your household. Additionally, because we'll be spending so much time indoors and a lot of times usually around one another, you naturally we go to our phones, we go to the internet, we turn to these resources because we want to numb the sort of the agony of being away from all the things that we were used to. So going online has its, uh, you know, it has its vices. It, it, it can become problematic, namely because of all the information that's out there. Every single day, every single hour, there are new reports, new Facebook posts, new tweets on Twitter, and all of these things can become overwhelming. And the reality is, is that we don't necessarily need to read every single thing. So again, having this open, honest conversation with the members of your home, your, uh, your children, your spouse, whoever, that if we're gonna read the news and if we're gonna check the news, because we don't wanna catastrophize, we don't wanna make things bigger than they are, we wanna stick to the facts and we wanna stick to credible sources. And this is another thing that can really bring about that peace at home. Because again, the idea is we wanna reconnect with our families by spending quality time with one another and being present for each other. If we get caught up in the details of and the nuance of various news outlets and various updates, really what that's going to do for us is it's going to exacerbate the frustrations that we already have. So if we're going to stick to following the news and following online updates, that at least that we can be on the same page with one another, that we're only going to follow credible sources. Additionally, being open about our feelings and our emotions is absolutely essential. If someone's feeling down, if someone's feeling out, they're exhausted, they're tired, they're fatigued, they're depressed, they're just, they just feel like they're pent up, having an outlet to communicate that to, to those around you is absolutely crucial. It's absolutely essential. And the, the reality is, is we hear often in a hadith and various stories and anecdotal points from our Islamic heritage and our Islamic tradition that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to often go to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam for uh, counsel. They used to go to him and they would ask him for counsel and advice. And a very famous incident was when a Bedouin Sahabi came and he said, Ausini, and give me, give me advice, O Messenger of Allah. And the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, responded by saying, La taghdab, don't get angry. And he repeated this three times. So keeping that in mind, for the purposes of our sort of situation and then kind of some of the things that we're, we're struggling with, to keep in mind that being open about our issues and seeking counsel, whether it's from your parents or from a friend via telecommunications, etc., there's nothing wrong with that. But again, being open about that because we're all struggling one way or another um, uh, because of this virus and because of sort of the, 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 the county laws and ordinances that we have to abide by. The third uh, action item is maintaining structure. And that can be very difficult at times, especially given the amount of uh, restrictions that we that we have. I mean, the executive order or the the state order that that we've been issued has a long list of things that we can do and cannot do, and that can be problematic because again, it's restrictive. However, we shouldn't be sort of uh, uh, distracted from maintaining a healthy lifestyle day in and day out. Part of that includes establishing a daily routine. So what time you're going to wake up, what time you're going to have breakfast, what time if you have work to get to work, you need to get ready for work, you need to go into your office or you need to go into a separate room. So allocating time for that is absolutely essential. If you have a structure in your day, it'll continue to give you that purpose that you had when the, when the order was not into effect, when we didn't have to sort of be uh, somewhat restricted to our homes. So establishing a daily routine, what time you're going to have lunch, what time you're going to spend time with the family, what time you're going to spend time with your kids, what time you're going to allocate time for yourself, how much screen time you want to allocate as well, is are absolutely crucial so that we don't get that fatigue uh, to overwhelm us. Additionally, when we do use our screens and when we do go to TV or computer or watching movies, etc., that we also maintain a balance. 
I know I, I understand that a lot of what people are saying online is that, well, binge watch Netflix and go on Disney Plus and do all these things and watch all those movies and things that you didn't have time for before. And although that might feel like it's uh, a relief and it might be fun to do for a little while, it can really spiral out of control after a while. So if you're to indulge, indulge, but do so uh, in moderation, right? Allocate some time in the day for other activities, exercise, eating healthy, talking to a family, spending time with family, and not just being glued to our screens and to our phones. I don't wanna sound cliche because we've heard this all the time, but it is necessary to allocate time outside of just being on social media and on our phones and um, watching movies and TV. Um, and lastly, for maintaining structure, we wanna also ensure that we have time for fun and self-care because that seems like the last thing on any of our minds is spending time for ourselves and allocating time just for our own needs and wants. Uh, and so if that's something that we don't pay attention to, again, that's only gonna fuel the frustration, the exhaustion, uh, and all the sort of emotional, uh, 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 the, emotional uh, the, the emotions that we have that we need to maintain balance of. If we don't give ourselves a time for a break, what's gonna happen is that that thing is gonna reach its peak, our frustration, our emotions are gonna reach its peak, and it's just gonna, it's gonna completely just overwhelm everyone around us, and we're not gonna be a very pleasant person to be around. And just to sort of bring it slowly to a close, uh, part of the action items is maintaining some activity in your life, whether that's walking around your block. And for those who haven't fully read the order the state has sent out, it doesn't mean that you don't have, you can't go out. It doesn't mean that you have to be locked up and cooped up in a room. It means that if you're gonna go out, you can of course go out for a walk, for a jog, to exercise, to be out. However, you have to maintain social distancing, six feet from someone else. And so just maintaining that, you can of course still go for a walk, go to the park, just be careful and cautious at all times. Allocating space in your home um, f for yourself or for others to have quiet time is also crucial. Part of activity and allocating time for, one, uh, for, for yourself or for each other includes allocating uh, alone time and time that's you know, away from everybody else. Because being in a house or being major spending most of your time in one place can lead to that kind of issue where you're constantly around other people. So allocating time for yourself is absolutely okay. And lastly, be in touch. There are people out there who are, are for example, elderly, our relatives who are far away, who the situation may not be as severe or intense for them, or it is more severe and more intense for them. And because the conditions vary literally city to city, county to county, it doesn't hurt to reach back out, to give them a call, to video chat with them, to check up on them, to text them, Use this time to contact and reach out to your family members, your relatives, those your those amongst uh, you know those around you who are your loved ones, and even those who you haven't reached out to in a long time. Again, the hadith mentions that if anybody wants that their provisions and your risk is extended, and that you want that your life to be extended, then do what? Then maintain good relations with one's family. And inshallah, we pray that Allah gives us ease during these difficult times. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.